Can I start? Uh, I'm Paul Maltby, uh, Director of Open Data and Government Innovation in the Cabinet Office. So thank you for coming to the session uh, this afternoon. I'm going to run through a little bit about uh, what open data is and, more importantly, how it's being used um, by people inside and outside government to do quite amazing things. Um, I've got a number of slides that explain, uh, that give a sense of, of, of what this uh, means, but starting in the, in the top, really, what is open data? Essentially, it's, it's as making available uh, government data to the wider public, particularly companies, but campaigners also, in ways that they can reuse uh, made applications from using their business processes. And the critical thing is that we don't put conditions in the license for, to, to, that stop uh, uh, the use and reuse of that data, and we make it freely available at, at, at free charge. In reality, it's a set of um, CSV files that you can open up in a, a spreadsheet. So this is um, uh, open data for Bedfordshire street crime uh, via data.gov.uk, and you can see it's just a pretty simple table, but the critical thing is it, it's machine readable, and people can start to build this into, into programs and applications um, to, to, to make groovy things from. Um, the transparency agenda uh, in the Cabinet Office, we're sort of directed by three things around um, economic growth uh, for UK businesses, for uh, Im uh, improving public services, and also for the accountability of government back to the taxpayer to make sure that we're making best use of all the, uh, uh, the people's money that we spend on their behalf. Um, I think it's important to locate the open data agenda within a wider, huge change on, on, on data more generally. I mean, there's something from uh, the UK MD of, um, uh, of, of Google saying the other month about you know, how many times people look at their smartphones every day. He said that on average in the UK, 250 times you look at your smartphone. Now, I don't know, are you above or below average? I, I, I sort of fear that I might even be above, you know? Um, <laughs> but, but I think it's important to realize you know, this, the world is changing under our feet. Uh, we are in the middle of this data revolution uh, amid and around us. And in some ways, you know, some of the guys at the Open Data Institute, one of the, uh, the organizations, part government funded, doing lots of incubation of, of open data startups and training for civil servants and others. You know, they say, look, we're actually in our 1993 moment. You remember that first time you saw the internet? And like someone showed you it, and you're like, oh, OK, I don't know, <laughs> maybe. And we're in that moment where people are trying stuff out. People are, 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 are using this data, inventing things. Amongst, you know, part of our aim is to make sure that some of the next generation of big uh, tech and data companies that are exist in the world are UK businesses. Because in that first generation, many of them were US businesses, right? So we have this point in time where the, uh, where the big data, linked data, uh, internet of things or internet of sensors is happening underneath our feet. We want to be at the forefront of this uh, for the UK. Um, some of the uses of this, some of you might be aware of Guardian Data Blog, um, Simon Rogers now at, at, at Twitter, but uh, James Ball and others at the, at the Guardian doing some quite amazing um, visualizations of, of government data based on open data. This gives you a sense of um, where the money is spent across government and where, it, it, where the, the, the first round of cuts fell, so I think it's slightly out of date, 2011 and 12. Um, but I think, you know, the, not only The Guardian, but, uh, but other uh, newspapers doing really quite amazing uh, visualizations as a result of the data. Really, it's that accountability back to the tax base. It's about how democracy works in the modern age. You may be also aware of some of the first generation of applications that were uh, made uh, as a result of data that was opened up from government. So police.uk uh, is an example where you can see, you type in your address and see what um, crimes in different categories have been happening in your area. You can see the, 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 the names, photos, contact details for your uh, local neighborhood team. And it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a, a mechanism, again, to be able to show people what's happening um, and be able to get in touch back with the state in a more two-way uh, situation. Unusually, um, the police.uk is, uh, is, is commissioned by the Home Office. It's paid for by the Home Office. And it's in contrast to many of the other applications that I'll show you through, where we make available the data Developers outside government play around with the data and make things from it, and then the public uh, benefits in various ways uh, as a result. So in some ways, it's that sort of three-stage uh, three uh, 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 change. Um, an example, and again, one based on public services. Um, look, you know, this is a relatively straightforward and simple uh, application. You can find it via data.gov.uk or via the, um, the uh, iTunes uh, uh, place. But you... You know, it's really simple. You can type in your address. You can see what GP surgeries are local to you. you it's based on NHS data from the, uh, the big patient survey. So you can see how many people. So you can see, look, you know, does, does uh, 
uh, Southwell Medical Center or whatever, or Loudoun Medical Center, look, they, they've got three and a half stars, they've got one and a half stars. There's something going on there, even though they're sort of neighbor um, GP surgeries. You dig into it and you say, look, you know, would you recommend this GP surgery to your friends and family? So a great proxy question to understand, look, was the, what was the overall experience there, right? And what, what surprises me is actually the, the star rating vary quite a lot. I would expect everything to sort of average out at three and a half, a bit like, you know, like on those uh, you know, Amazon book reviews. It's like, well, okay. Um, but look, you know, there's a real difference there. And it, I think there's something interesting because um, I think this shows you how you can start to use this in complicated, sophisticated public services. It's only a start, right? It's a relatively straightforward application. But I, it's one that I think shows you the way forward. I mentioned the Internet of Things, this idea that it's not just people producing data now on the Internet, but it's actually the objects that we carry around. So our phones beaming back where we are, our GPS in the cars, uh, our sat nav showing where we are all the time. Things like, you know, the fork that counts calories for you and beams it back to your computer, the fridge that orders milk before you've run out, you know, those sorts of things. So, I know, I'm not sure if they're quite for me, but you know, one that I do like is something from the city of Boston, Street Bump app. So what it does, it starts to register, you know the accelerometer that you have in your phones that tells you whether you're moving your phone around? Well, when you have mass use of these things and people have got the little application, when you run over a pothole, yeah, it beams it back to the traffic guys so they know, you know where the potholes are just as they're developed so that they, they can change their pattern of repairs. Now, is anyone from Bristol here? Because I'd heard that, there was, that Bristol had done something like that. Now, whether or not that's kind of happened, I don't know. But you know, these, these ideas of relatively simple applications, that data revolution happening underneath, some of this is open data being able to use by this, the traffic guys, but maybe other people too. The, the one that you may well ha um, um, uh, have heard about is the uh, transport application. So uh, can you show a quick show of hands of people who've got something on their smartphone that tells them when to get their next tube or the train or the parking? Quick show of hands, who's got something like that? Right, two thirds maybe? You know, more of you may yet to get these things. So, you know, if you, if you live in London or other major cities, these things are a lifesaver. Like for three minutes, it suddenly counts, doesn't it? You know, you don't know where you need to get the bus exactly in three minutes' time. And, and, and many of these things are, are, used, uh, are based on open data, available via data.gov.uk, sometimes beam back, um, and, and, and again, UK companies processing this data, interpreting it, and sometimes even selling it back to Transport for London for the services that they then provide out to, to their citizens. So this is that combination of accountability for um, taxpayers' money, improving public services, but actually UK Brit British businesses behind this, um, uh, making money, doing good services, and, and, and leading the world. Um, other things, like, you know, another great example, um, the uh, guys at Mastodon C looking at uh, the, for the prescribing analytics website. So they took the millions of lines of GP prescribing data, millions and millions of lines, big data this is, right? Big data, you need big machines to do this stuff. And what they did is they go through and say, okay, look, what's, where can we save the NHS money? Where can the NHS kind of find an advantage? Well, there's that thing we've suspected for a while, I guess, that um, the statin drugs between, the difference between the branded statins from the pharmaceutical companies and the generic statins that don't have the packaging and the labeling. Well, they cost different amounts of money. These guys did the map and look, looked to see which GPs had been dispensing what and found that you could have 200 million pounds worth of savings if the guys working from the branded statins moved to generic statins. Now again, I think people who knew that sort of within the NHS anyway suspected it, but now you've got a map, a heat map that tracks it down to individual GP surgeries. And at a time when we're all trying to save money, trying to do things the better ways for, for uh, the public that we serve, um, isn't it fabulous to be able to use data in a different way to be able to uh, get a different angle on how to um, process things? And again, um, a, a thriving UK startup behind that, not just serving the, the public sector, but also the private sector too. I've talked a little bit about applications, the stuff you have on your smartphones based on the open data, sometimes mixed with other data, and they're great. There's going to be some really fabulous uh, 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 things come into existence that are all, some are already there, some are yet to be invented. But you know what? Sometimes I think the really big value in open data to the economy is in the stuff behind the scenes. As, as companies start to think about data in their organizations, processing the data, they're going to be using some of the data that's been made available, maybe sitting on your machines back in the office, that sort of data that becomes available that they can use as part of their data analytics for their company. So that might be um, the, the search engines, people who've got Google now that sort of tells you which train to catch before you even realize you needed to get a train. Has anyone got that slightly spooky uh, but amazing service? You know, again, maybe based on some of the transport uh, data that's out there. The credit reference agencies taking things like, you know, we, we've been fighting hard to get things like 
like the VAT uh, data out of government so that, that business can, can, small businesses in particular can uh, have easier access to uh, 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 credit ratings so they can secure credit to, to, to help their businesses. But you know, many different examples. One around the corner, people have been, have anyone been to the, the Scraper Wiki uh, stall? Uh, again, a, a UK startup um, business based on open data, but doing quite amazing things in the UK and overseas increasingly uh, based on the open data. Some of this is in your pocket and on the smartphones, but an awful lot of the value isn't in that direction. It's hidden behind the scenes. So what do we do in, in the transparency team in the cabinet office? Well, the main thing is, is, is to extract this raw material so that others can use it making available a huge richness of data. So it might be lying around gathering virtual dust on your machines. It might be usable uh, in ways that you never imagined by uh, campaigners, by private sector organizations out there. Um, huge amounts of data sitting around on there. I mean, we had a bit of a back of the envelope uh, calculation. Just taking the weather data alone, we reckon if we printed it all out on A4, right, you know, how far might that stretch? Yeah, you know, is it one of those London to Scotland things? So it turned out it was, it was like London to the moon. <laughs> Three times, right? It's a huge amount of data. I mean, you never obviously would. But, you know, huge amount of data that is there being used. Even though we don't have as much data as in the States, uh, our data is used more and in, practically used more by, by British businesses and world businesses than, than it happens in the UK. A really world-leading data portal um, with, the, with the guys who are doing the open source CCAN software that's based on. Um, we've been out to Australia. Uh, sorry, we, we haven't been out. Well, we, it's the people from Australia and Argentina and elsewhere around the world have been using our... Uh, 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 you know, the, the, this sort of um, backdrop in the open source way to, to, to um, develop open data portals in their own countries. Um, data.gov.uk is really important to us and what marks it out um, compared to some of the other data portals in the world, it's quite responsive to the users. Right? So if you want to request a data set, you can go on there and you can start to see and track where your request for data is within the system. We're trying to move to a, to a, a world finally, the Stephen Shakespeare review the other, the other week where we're trying to set out what is the UK's national information infrastructure. What are all the data sets that yet to be released, that could be released, that we will release? So we're going to be proactive about this. But say if you're sitting there in your, your organization, your company, and you know that there's probably a data set somewhere out there that would really help you, you can request it via this site, and the team will go and chase it through government departments to try and find it. And where it's possible, where it's appropriate, we'll re get that released. This point about the appropriateness of the release of data is a critical point. We can't talk about open data without talking about uh, privacy and security for individual data. Much of the data that we have available on data.gov.uk is, um, say, environmental data, stuff that where there's not a direct public um, consumer's point. This isn't your personal data that's going to be released about what you do in the GP surgery. This isn't about you identifying your data as an individual. This is about generic government data about what happens with services. But there are some data, like the prescribing data set that I mentioned, that you have to make sure that if it can be released, it needs to be uh, anonymized suitably uh, in an appropriate way. So we have this uh, uh, appropriate tension in the work that we do, where we're trying to release this data, be the um, evangelist for releasing data, trying to make this happen through the system, but making sure that, the, that people's personal data and their, uh, the, the security of their personal data is all times um, uh, uh, sec uh, secured in that system. Um, we've been moving through, I think, a, a pattern where we started off with saying, look, you can start to request data sets. Is there anything, what, what might be most important? Where we, This is becoming more routine in what we do as a team and what we do as a government to say that it's not, we're flipping it. So it's not just what could you request, but actually there's starting to be an expectation that government data sitting there can and should be released. So we have the, uh, we're about to see commence the, uh, the right to data under the FOI Act. Um, we, we're, uh, as I mentioned, the post the Shake, uh, Stephen Shakespeare review, working on what is the national information infrastructure uh, and the idea of that underpinned by the European Union um, Public Sector Information Directive that uh, has recently been agreed. Um, and also we had, uh, in recent weeks, uh, agreement for a, uh, the GA Open Data Charter. Um, let me just flick through a couple, because um, this is, there's a worldwide change going on. It's not just the UK, it's not just the States, it's not just France and some other countries at the vanguard. It's really interesting how the ideas of open government and open data meshed together are starting to transform how many countries are thinking about democracy in the modern age. So we're, we're uh, the lead co-chair, as it is at the moment of this um, club of reforming countries, 59 countries across the world, or sort of reformers in countries, um, in 59 countries across the world, 
uh, we're the lead co-chair. Indonesia is our junior co-chair, and they'll take over the leadership of um, the Open Government Partnership uh, in, in October, or in November, I think. Um, and I, I love this case study that they had where, you know, they, they were funding a bridge in Aceh province, I think after the uh, tsunami that they had. And they're finding that actually, you know, sometimes the money goes missing and the bridge never gets built. So now they have this service working for the, the, the president's office where you can say, look, this is what we, we, we've decided to fund as the president's office. And if it hasn't been funded, you tell us, right? You can SMS us. And huge, you know, Facebook penetration in Indonesia. I think it's the fourth largest Facebook country. Huge amounts of uh, a young population, very mobile uh, and, uh, and data literate. And, and, and the country's trying to find that extra edge in the modern world that, that helps their democracy take shape, but also their businesses too. So this is that worldwide change. We have been fighting for this as the, um, as the president of the, uh, the G8 this year, and we fought for this open data charter, which was the thing I just sh showed here, where we say, look, that we, the G8 countries, shall release data. There will be deep, deep, we will have um, data, uh, release of data, open data by default which is, again is a really significant shift, not just for the UK, but for all those countries, all industrialized countries together, saying this is a big thing, this is a big thing that's happening for, for our countries, for the, the accountability for our countries, back to the taxpayers, but also for our uh, uh, future markets and, and industry. Um, sorry, I've gone the wrong way. Um, what else have we been doing? Well, actually, part of our, uh, our job in the Cabinet Office team, and, and I think more, more broadly, is to be that interface between those businesses, those startup businesses increasingly, but not always startup businesses, and the, the government policy people and data people back in, the, back in our, our teams. So things like the Open Data Institute, if people have come across that, they've had many thousands of people through their doors since they opened six months ago. Um, great if you're in London, no, not all of you are, but if you're in London, they have these Friday lectures. You can get along for an hour on a Friday lunchtime. They're really interesting, showing you how people are using open data, what it can mean, what open government means in practice. Um, also doing a, a, a really quite uh, you know, phenomenal, I think, set of um, uh, training courses for uh, individuals on all aspects of um, open data, but including for civil servants who are interested in this as, a, as an idea. Um, there's also things that nothing to do with government at all, things like um, Google Campus, where they've got huge, if you ever had the ability to go to Tech City and see this stuff in action, these are people really focused on their startup. Yes, getting through quite a lot of coffee. <laughs> But you know, sitting at the, the, the desk in the cafe there, beavering away, properly focused on, on, on um, making their businesses work. And I think you know, we'll find some of the big tech businesses of, the, of, of this century amongst that group of people. It's not just in London, Cambridge, Manchester, Bristol, elsewhere. There's really quite amazing things happening. Um, so that was my sort of quick whiz through what open data is. Um, some of the uses that it's been put to, some of the amazing things I think you can see happening already, but I think glimpses of what could be possible as we go forward into the future. A sense of why this matters for the economy in a modern world, but also for what it means as to, to be in a democracy, to be a civil servants in, in, a, in a world where people are increasingly expecting the ability to know what is going on, to know what's going on on their phones, and have access to the data that makes that stuff happen. So that was my quick whip through. Um, uh, really happy if people have got questions or other uh, uh, points they wanted to, to, to raise too. Hey. Do you want to stand up so people can? So I'd like to know Yeah, yeah. Um, so there was the risks around Indeed. Those yeah. Are they are they doing it are they reading it in the right way? Yeah. yeah. So so if you didn't so come. Yeah. I would be interested to know what advice you have for people who are working in areas which are about to be opened up in terms of keeping track of what's happening. So yeah. yeah. That's, that's good. That's a good point. Um so if you may not have heard that, so let me try and um, paraphrase if I may. So um, there's a 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 the idea of, you know, if we release data, it could be interpreted in all sorts of different ways. People might read it in the wrong way and, and make stupid inferences from, from this data. And what do we do um, both to protect against that but advise for um, uh, departments that are just at that, that stage of the journey because in health you went through that a little while ago, it would be fair to say. So my immediate take on this isn't quite right, but if I was being sort of like, um, um, you know, devil's advocate to you, I'd be like, well, first of all, um, we make decisions on that data all the time, right? And... You know, we, 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 but we, but, but there's data. But so there's a difference between data that's swilling around our system. Sometimes it's imperfect. Sometimes it's not complete. And sometimes it sometimes feels to me that 
Um, there's a point of resistance saying, look, we can have the data, but only once we finally got it totally clean and clear and proper. Now, what we're sort of finding, in, so to say to be devil's advocate to this, is that on some of the data, even things like um, companies' house data, um, which is pretty good, like record system, but people are working in that, saying, look, we found flaws and errors in your data, right? We'd be very happy to let you know if you want to know, right? And so some of the data that we've been using, that we've been thinking as, as being pretty good, actually, once you make it open, it becomes even better and people start to clean that up. I think it's also important to distinguish between things like national statistics, that sort of, you know, gold-plated, this is this has definitely gone through a proper process, um, clear and open and, and, and sort of truthful, and some of the dirtier data that just sort of sloshes around our system, which still be of real use to people. And making a distinction on that, the Open Data Institute having things like their uh, open data certificates that give people a much more upfront understanding of what is this data, how, how accurate is it, what processes has it gone through, what sort of license does it have, I think is a useful uh, way to enable people to do that. Um, but, you know, sometimes this is, a, this is a move and there are risks and uncomfortable things that happen. And one of those is we don't know how people are going to use that. It's possible for me to go and take some of the data that um, might have been machine readable under this process, but may, I may have been able to FOI it and then claim that, you know, look, I've, I've correlated the number of hospitals with an area with the crime rate and declared on my new brilliant website that, that you should never go to Gloucester or something, right? Because uh, something that's not true. I mean, newspapers, you know, they always take out the government statistics in the, in the, in the way that uh, civil servants would like it to be interpreted, and that's probably the risk of um, modern world, but increasingly in this world too. So I think there's ways of being careful in departments about, um, and as government, about what are we saying, what claims can you make on the back of this data? But some of that is just part of actually what the new world looks like, and people will make overclaim and make it wrong inferences from that, I'm sure, too. But I think that's always been with us to an extent. Well, so, so, so good question. I think um, uh, what we advise, I think, p get people to get their heads around what this is as part of the exercise that we're doing today and what it means and what is happening out there. Um, for those that are more closely associated, things like the training courses to understand what that might mean too. But, you know, if you're talking about how how's the outside world going to interpret the government's data is, you know, I'm not sure in a way what, 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 what training, I'd be interested if there's other views on that too. But uh, what else we might do? Let me take a few more questions as well. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So this question was: um, uh, the data is useful, but when it's linked data, it's even more powerful and more and more um, uh, uh, has even more value in the system. And I think. Um, well, that is true, right? So there's, there's, there's some you know, great power from the linked data we have. I think we have, um, I'm looking at Antonio now in the back, who's from the team, but you know, the extent to which we have um, promises around uh, the government's corporate data, we say will be, uh, we will make uh, available as linked data. Um, you know, so you, when we started to understand what do people do, what's their salary, what are their expenses, where, which department are they sitting in, we, we make that linked data. And linked data, essentially my like quick version of that is, um, it's a way that you describe you know, so are, are we talking about, um, you know, Manchester in the UK or Manchester in the States somewhere? And, and being, being clear, we're talking about this Manchester, not that Manchester. And so that if you're talking about, in that example, Manchester, all the things that are, it's easy to associate and find all the, uh, you know, the nightlife associated with it, the crime rates associated with it, you, you can bring it together to a single point of definition. And the linked data enables you to do that. There's also, you know, we're, we're making a lot of time available through the team on the linked data working group across government. So uh, bringing together those inside and outside government to be able to uh, promote that. So we're keen to do it wherever we can. We're putting time, energy, and resource into making that happen. It won't happen for everything, but where we can, we're, we're, we're trying to do that. I think there's an interesting question that comes with this too, particularly when you're talking to a private sector, um, uh, more private sector audiences, because you find that distinction between some would really like the data to be sort of clean, tidy, um, uh, cleaned up, um, linked where possible, and others just like, give me the data, give me the dirty data and I'll play with it, and I'll find the stuff you would never have dreamt of finding. And there's sort of a different, different sorts of um, industry needs and requests in that space too. So I guess we try, we try and cover both of those really. Sorry. 
What's in it? What's in it for? Well, we're trying. You know, our, our role is to try and. What's in it for us is the um, uh, to try and get the best use of this data by industry, by you know, even in the public sector and elsewhere. So we try and make it as um, as amenable and easy to find, which is why we you know we've, we've updated the data.gov.uk. We make it easy to search through what's available. You can go and browse through what applications there are already. Uh, about 300 or so open data applications there. So we try and make it for those who want to develop. Um, uh, products or applications based on this as, as simple and easy as possible. Um, yeah. So it says big data up there mm. on the screen. What's actually done within government to pull data together from various departments and analyse it internally? Well, it's a good question, I, and I think probably n not as much as should be done, I think, is, the, is, is, is one honest answer. There are parts of government that, of course, play with massive data sets on a day-to-day -day basis, right? So, you know, uh, went down to Exeter to see the, um, the, the Met Office and their massive supercomputer in its super secure room, and it's, you know, it, you know it's, like, it's quite cool. It's got, like, robot arms and all sorts of things. And, it, you know, they, they play with massive data on a daily basis, and they are, you know, they're, they're, they have an expertise within government about that. And you'll find other parts of government routinely working with, with huge data sets. When we get to the sharing of data across government departments, um, to, to be honest, in parts we've been hampered in some places by the legislative framework or interpretations of legislative framework. So uh, I think there's many people would like to see um, arrangements that were brought forward that enabled us to share data better across government to enable that to happen. Now, we, there are ways and means of doing that. Often you, we find ways, so, uh, way, for instance, the way in which the Department for Education makes available the, the pupil database on a kind of careful way. So we've trusted partners and you have to sign agreements. So it's, it's not open data in this sort of way because of that personal um, data point, but it enables uh, researchers in universities and elsewhere to be able to access that data in a, in a, in a controlled way. HMRC uh, are also a department that does that. But I think there's an opportunity when we're thinking about how um, uh, larger organizations, larger businesses are now thinking about their the exhaust data, particularly as you go digital by default, the amount of data that, um, the amount of uh, information that you can have as a result of knowing where the data s sits in a new digital system, I think we could do better at understanding that and using that as a way to save money for people, but also to provide better services. But we need to be able to do it in the appropriate legislative way, and then we need to make sure that that's uh, uh, not, um, you know, we, we keep within the law on that. Because there's good reasons why there's law there to stop us doing that too, because in, you, know, you don't necessarily want government to be able to uh, you know, uh, track your move in every single department and be able to you know, process that. There are, good, there are good reasons why that is there too. In the past, uh, government departments might have had commercial arrangements for selling data to industry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so does, does this undermine that and give them the sort of cost-cutting environment that we've got at the moment? Um, how do we marry that together? Yeah, yeah. So the question um, was, um, some departments have had commercial uh, arrangements to sell their data in the past, and does making the data available for free not undermine the, uh, the, the, the departmental funding basis at a time when we need, uh, as government, you know, needs these, these the money uh, more than ever? So I, I think that, that, you know, the guidance we have here, which is kind of the, the magnificence of the Treasury in providing us with the green buck, right? So... This, calcul this, 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 this source of guidance that says that when do you know what to do in government? How do you calculate whether this is worth doing or not? And it's basically, you know, uh, you know so, uh, uh, many of you have seen it as policymakers, but um, uh, if you, those of you who haven't, it's actually one of those um, uh, nice rare things of a really straightforwardly written government document that says this is when, this is the sort of, this is how you know whether to do something or not, right, in government. Um, and, you know, the, the question here is, is it better for um, HMRC, say, I think you're from it, so you're on your label, to say, um, for argument's sake, uh, earn a million pounds out of a particular data set that they might sell. And uh, uh, the alternative is, if you made that data available, what would be the net impact on the UK economy as a result of that? And the question is, you know, what, which, is, which is big, which has got the biggest net present value, right? So uh, what we're finding is that there's relatively small sums of uh, uh, money across uh, many government departments being raised from uh, uh, historically from selling bits and bobs of data. But the ways in which you can start to see 
um, a new sector of the economy emerging that is based on that data, the value is really in the value that they then will create from their businesses, not the quick cash back to government, right? So that's a general answer, but, <laughs> and the but is really important, there are some um, organizations, not least the trading funds and others, that are substantially funded as a result of the, the, um, the, the data that they then sell. So uh, the Met Office is an example, but there are others too. Um, that's when it gets a lot trickier, because then that calculation is harder to make and we have to be really careful that we don't you know, undermine you know, great British institutions that are, you know, that, that are uh, deeply credible, powerful, and um, uh, you know, resource generating and provide good value uh, to, to people and to the economy as a result of this agenda. So that's where we get into a sort of that, that argument sake. So we have, to, we have to kind of then go through with, with Treasury colleagues and others appropriately to work out where, how we do that. But you know, like that, and there's some really important uh, data that's out there that's in that realm, and we've, you know, we've made available, say, um, you know, the, the maps to a certain level of uh, definition, but at the really super definition, that's then not open data. They make it available, but so. But you know what? There's so much data around in our system. You think of how much data you see day in, day out in your department that is there that you've used that isn't, isn't secret. It isn't private information of, of particular individuals. It's not, um, you know, uh, the, the department isn't like dependent on it for its existence from a charging point of view. There is an awful lot of data that we have already made available. There's much more to become uh, available too. And in some ways, I think that's probably the, you know, there's a starting place there too, right? Okay, Scott, yeah. So let's take two. Let's take one and then the other if that uh, may not work, but let's try. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's also data that's been held by businesses about themselves. Yeah. So what, what's been done to try and uh, encourage mixing those? That's a great question. Do you want to? Go on, let me do mine. Try and see if I can do both together. So, um, so for those you know, the first question is: so, what about um, the data that government has? What about the data that government has that is about me? And what other data is there out there that is about me? And how how does that fit in? Does that mean? Oh. Anyway, um, uh, so um, uh, Biz have a, a program called uh, My Data. I think it's really interesting, right? So this is you, me you mentioned the, the green, the blue button, isn't it, in the states? So in the states. Um, um, you might know more than me, so like, let me, if, if people know, shout, I might get this wrong, but it's, it's something, it was, I think it was the National Veterans Association, wasn't it, in the States, where they're like, look, um, you know, so when you go to, the, is it the health site, I think it is, or the pension health site, there's a blue button, you can, you can click on the button, you can download your, your personal health data that is kept in the, in the system. And then you can take that off to a pharmacy and say, look, this is what's going on in my health. Like, you know, can, you, you know, what, you know, can you give me proper advice and, 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 and better advice around that? Um, and so I suppose in some ways inspired by that, it's, it's, it's a different take on open data. It's not quite the same thing, but it's, uh, and it's, I say, run out of biz. But they started with a, a clause, and I think was the, um, uh, was it, was it, it was a recent, it was a recent act, wasn't it? I forget which, it's, it's called, a cop, yes, okay, so thank you, you know all of those. So um, a clause in there, so if you've got, a, a company has information that is, you also say your bank or your supermarket, you should be able to say, look, I want to know what my, uh, you know, my personal download of my um, store card is, right? You know, so what have I been buying? Have I been buying fatty food or healthy food or, and, and so there's a clause there to try and get that, that working. But I think the really interesting stuff is when you bring that back into the public services, which is not what that um, clause and that bill is about. In health, um, there's a movement to try and be able to give personal access to health records um, by the end of the parliament. And I know that colleagues over there working on transparency are doing um, wonders to try and make that happen. But, you know, I kind of interested myself. It's like, you know, what's my kid's um, school record, right? You know, that's sitting in the system. I quite like to know that. And how does that compare to other kids in my school? or in the county, right? I don't know, it's one, but you can start to imagine what all those other versions of that might be. So I think that, that is sort of in a world to, uh, to potentially to come, and again, it comes with, you need to make sure that all those security things around, 
yeah, I can download my health data, but what happens if someone tricks me into doing that and then you know, steals it, buys it, whatever. You know, so there's, there's all sorts of um, uh, other questions that come with that too. But I do think it's interesting. I think the blue button is a, is a, is a real innovation in how we think of, of public services. I'm interested in that space. Um, so the question about CSV, um, um, well, the CSV is a great way of doing it. Rather, and what we say is like, rather than making it available as an as a Excel spreadsheet, which is a proprietary format, make it available as a CSV format. So then you don't have to sort of, the machines can read it direct without having to go via Excel to be able to extract it. And particularly if you're talking about big data sets, that becomes really quite important. Um, so uh, there's a Tim Berners-Lee sort of five star um, scoring system that says, you know, look, one star is just making it available, I'm gonna get lost here. Uh, two stars is making it um, uh, machine readable, three stars is in a non-proprietary format. And then the fourth and the fifth stars essentially come down to are you starting to link that data? Is this linked data and does it mean that you're starting to be able to put that level of interpret, or make available that level of interpretation that goes beyond you know, just that, 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 that simple data set? So CSV um, is, is uh, I suppose, the, the default which we prefer, um, but really we'd rather get the data out as a, you know, it's out and then better. Is, is I suppose the order in which we do that. Um, so it's the timing, we're really focused on the end of October to be able to say this is a national information infrastructure. This is what, these are the critical data sets across government that we think should be made available and we'd like those to be available by 2015. And some of that was set out in the response to Shakespeare review. So that's the sort of main bit of timing, but a lot of conversations are happening now and will happen over the summer with departments about um, the exact timing of that. So that's the bit to watch out for, I think. Okay. Right, so that's good. Thank you very much. It's a good set of questions. So it's uh, nice and probing. Thank you very much. Yeah.